Hello, uh, my name is Adam, and this is Christina in the front row. She's my colleague. If you don't mind, we'd like to do this in English. Is it okay? Yeah, I think it is a yes. So, uh, we will make a really huge jump, and we would like to give a presentation to you about neurotechnology and its potentials. Well, uh, very specifically, just EEG and some very specific applications of what you can do with EEG. We came from Synetic, which is a tiny little startup company, surprisingly working with neurotechnology, EEG, and neuromarketing. So, if you're going to talk about neurotechnology, obviously, you have to start with the brain. Uh, I guess you all know that the brain is made up of uh, an awful lot of cells called neurons, and they have uh, the, the working the, or the operation of the neurons is basically the voltage changes over their membrane, and this is what defines all your uh, all your thoughts, your movements, your uh, your feelings. And there are plenty of different ways how you can measure these. This is a highly non-scientific uh, graph of what you can do. But what, what I would like you to note is that there is EEG in the top left corner. That means it's uh, really easy to use, but also it gives you very approximate results. And uh, you can see fMRI in the middle. That's like a bit better, but already really expensive to use. And on the lower right corner, you can see the implanted electrodes, which, uh, which basically means that we have to cut your head and have to open your skull and have to implant electrodes inside, which is not people what normally want you to do. Them. So we'll be focusing, with e focusing on EEG and a tiny little bit on fMRI. Um, EEG means electroencephalography, and this is the last time I'm telling you this word today, because it's a bit long. But it basically means that they are putting electrodes over your skull, sometimes with conductive gel, sometimes without, and they are recording the general state of your brain. So we don't record the single neurons, we don't record single areas, we just get some general information about what your brain is doing and how fast it is doing that. Uh, in the top you can see two pictures, those are medical grade EEG devices. As you can see it takes quite a long time to apply it to the patient, it's not really comfortable, it's, it's not something that you want to have on your head for a long period of time. But right now you can also buy some entry level EEGs, they don't have so good resolution or so good, uh, so good uh, parameters. But you can apply them in like five minutes and it's quite good. It's something that you can actually use on your own at home. So that's why we believe it's a new market and that's why we are working with this technology. This is what you get from EEG, more precisely. This is what you get from EEG. So as you can see, it's not something that, uh, that you can directly understand. Uh, you can make some heat maps and calculations and all that. But in general, uh, processing EEG, EEG is difficult and making some some uh, thoughts, so like telling that you are angry or happy or something like that, just from these signals, it's a really difficult task. And also the problem with EEG is that it's really, really sensitive to artifacts. So if I'm just, uh, I don't know, yawning or speaking, then you will see artifacts that are like three times as big as the signal itself. So it's quite difficult to get rid of these. Anyway, using EEG is really cheap and really easy, and that's why they have uh, there is a really widespread application for it. Originally, it was used in the medical field for epilepsy and consciousness measurements. Then it took, uh, took more place in the research community. Right now, what's more interesting for us is brain-computer com interfaces. So basically, you can spell words uh, just by your thoughts, but you can, you can make simple movements of like a robotic arm just by your thoughts, or emotion recognition. That means I can actually tell whether you are uh, frustrated or happy why you are watching a video clip or something like that. That's what we'll be focusing on a bit more. So, the main idea is that we would like to read your mind, or at least we would like to get some information about what you're thinking about. Um, if we could plant electrodes in your head, that would be pretty easy. Do you recognize that goal? Yeah? Someone? At least someone? Okay, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Everyone is supposed to have a Jennifer Aniston neuron. That means uh, there is a very specific neuron in your head that fires only when you see Jennifer Aniston. That's uh, pretty cool stuff. And no matter how you see her, so if you see her in a color picture, in a drawing, uh, that neuron fires. So if I could put uh, an electrode next to that uh, neuron, I could tell you whether you, I could tell whether you see Jennifer Aniston right now or not, or if you're thinking about her. Be careful. But we don't have that. 
If we could use high spatial resolution methods, that is fMRI, uh, we would still be a bit lucky because the brain is built up in a way that certain functions exist in certain places. So if I can see that certain places of your brain is really active, I have at least a rough idea about what you are thinking about or how you feel. Unfortunately, EEG is not a high spatial resolution technique. So what can we do? Uh, what we can do is we can apply advanced uh, signal processing methods, feature extraction, machine learning methods, so that we try to make the best use of, this, uh, of that really rough and, and sort of dirty signal that's coming out of your EEG. This is a technology meetup, so some of you might be interested in how that goes. I don't want to go too deep into technology stuff, just to give you a, a few ideas what it means. For example, the EEG signal is a fairly wide spectrum from below 1 hertz to over 200 hertz, and you can see rhythmic oscillations in different bands in that spectrum. And the rhythmic oscillations or the power of those oscillations tells us how active your brain is or how, how passive or how relaxed you are. So, for example, the alpha and beta bands, I mean, the ratio of the alpha and beta bands tells us how active or how relaxed you are. This is one of the things we can do with it. Uh, then we can measure the signal power over these different parts of your scalp. So, for example, if your left hemisphere in the frontal region is more active than the right one, it might mean that you have positive, it usually means that you have positive emotion. If it's the other way around, it means you have a negative emotion. The third thing we can do is we can detect certain waveform features. So if I show you pictures really fast, and then I look at, look at your EEG, and look at the time slot around 300 milliseconds after showing the picture, I can tell you whether you recognize what you saw or not. So processing EEG is a, is a fairly difficult thing, yet you can make really uh, useful information from, from this. And you can use it for plenty of different applications. What I would like to focus on now uh, is just uh, one of these called neuromarketing. <laughs> neuromarketing basically means that we'll, uh, we would like to gain some sort of information from what you think that even you couldn't tell us. So uh, we would like to know. Okay. <laughs> we would like to know uh, whether whether you like the commercial, whether you like the song, uh, why you are buying that certain piece in the in the store and not the other one next to it. Um, usually, you, when you do neuromarketing, you don't use only EEG. You use a set of different techniques together because that way you can get a lot better uh, information. Of course, neuromarketing is not without, it, well, not without its criticism. I think the most important one is that uh, it's really easy to do it bad. It's really easy to just look at the information or look at the signals, torture it long enough and then say, you were happy. That's usually not true. So you have to train for that particular user. You have to do a lot of research. But I believe that it can be done right. And just to give you an idea of what it means in practice, for example, there was one, uh, one research conducted when they were trying to predict commercial success of songs just by showing those songs to like five to ten uh, people. And they were looking at a specific part of their brain. And if there was a high activity in that part, then it meant that the song became commercially successful. Which is a really a big thing if you, if you think about it, because they only tested in a really small sample, so like 10 people, and even after those 10 people, they could actually tell which songs will be, uh, will be commercially successful, so which, song, which songs will be liked by a high population of people. The other one I would like to show you is when you combine eye tracking and EEG and uh, you show someone a commercial. So what you see is in the lower left corner, there is someone watching in the video, in the top you will see the video itself. The dot shows where she is focusing right at the moment. And the road... <laughs> yeah, she's focusing on the boobs, of course. And on the lower right corner, you can see her uh, engagement or emotional levels. So this is, a, this is a sort of thing that you can do with EEG, or you can do with neuromarketing. And it's really interesting because she wouldn't be able to tell you which parts are the ones that she really like, but you can actually see that on the graph. Uh, neuromarketing just, was just one of the possible applications of all this, but the good thing is that you can buy EEG headsets for really cheap now, like one to two hundred dollars. Uh, you can have APIs for all the major languages and, and platforms, so if you would like to hack any of your uh, ideas, like if you would like to fly a helicopter with your EEG waves, 
you can actually go and build it for yourself. So happy hacking, and if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to approach us, and we'll be glad to help you. Thank you. We are a really young startup company, mostly made up of people living in France, but we are here in Budapest right now. And we would like to build, our first application is around your marketing, and that's where we would like to build up a business, and we are working on that right now here in Budapest. So if you would like to have a longer chat, you are always welcome in our office. Yep. Which headset would you recommend? I saw some headset back in a few years ago, only a single sensor. I don't know how useful that is. How would you recommend for the set? It really depends on what you want to do. Among of these entry-level headsets, uh, we use right now this Emotive Epoch, and we believe that's one of the best options that has 14 sensors, so it's sort of okay. But you can do something useful with only one sensor, but you have to make sure that you put it over a place that you're interested in. So if you only, only have one, uh, one sensor and you want to do, it's called P300 recognition, that was the, the third paper thing that I showed. If you want to do that, you can do that with one sensor. If you want to do emotion recognition, like comparing the two hemispheres, you can't do that with one sensor. So it really depends on what you want to do. Obviously, the more sensors, uh, the better. That's that's usually true. Yeah. With the sensors you are using right now, so as of today, yeah. uh, how much time does it take to set up a sensor, including software calibration? So, so you know, because I guess it has to be the right position. They have to train the, you know, surely happy, surely sad, whatever, some kind of training. I can do it with an epoch in five minutes on myself, but it depends on a lot of factors. So, for example, if you have a lot of hair, like. Uh, you in the middle with the curly hair, it will definitely take longer to set, up, set it up for you than for me. Uh, these, are the, these are the ones that are called uh, dry sensor technology, so that you don't have to put conductive gel on your head. If you use some, uh, some device that uses gel, then it of course takes a lot longer. And the medical gray stuff, they have like 256 sensors and conductive gels and all that, so it takes hours to prepare that. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much.